Good morning, folks, and welcome to the tank monitoring office hours. Um, we're excited that you've joined us. Um, we're going to give everyone a couple minutes to get into the WebEx, and then uh, we will get started. Thanks. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining today. Um, wanted to mention a few things before we start on the content. So again, thanks uh, for joining the Tank Monitor and Office Hours. We're going to be doing this for uh, four weeks. This is week number one. Um, four weeks of office hours. Uh, we do have a schedule. Uh, if you logged into Smart Tank, there right before you log into Smart Tank, there is a link um, to register for the remaining sessions. You do have to register for each. Um, also, when you're logged into Smart Tank, there is a link for registering for the rest of the session. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I wanted to bring up a few housekeeping uh, items prior to starting. Um, everyone is muted. Um, so if you would like to ask a question, if you have a question mid uh, presentation, just raise your hand. We will call on you. Um, if you do have a question that you would like to type, you can type it in the chat. You can type it in the questions section on the, um, the webinar launch. Uh, everyone should have one of those. So, you know, we're gonna go through the content and then if you, you know, wanna type it because you don't wanna forget the question, please feel free to do so. We will get to all questions uh, once the presentation is done. Um, as far as the $15 DoorDash coupon, uh, you have to stay for the entirety of the presentation and that makes you eligible to receive. Um, the link will come from our uh, marketing department as soon as the session has ended. So I wanted to make sure everyone was clear on that. Um, and today, week number one, um, we will be talking about Smart Tank Dispatch. Um, we are going to be able to demonstrate how the dispatch sec uh, the, the offering is uniquely able to combine real-time tank level visibility with comprehensive planning and dispatching. It's very high level. Um, and today we have a uh, presenter who has worked on the development and the eventual rollout of this product. So this is a web-based product. Um, it's Faraz Hussein. He is our product manager and sales engineer. He has uh, a presentation for everybody today to review this uh, new functionality. So without further ado, here's Faraz. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for joining in. And as I pointed out, this is our new web-based dispatch solution. It's really a cloud-based end-to-end dispatch solution, which is almost like a light dispatch. Um, everything from your order generation to your planning board, assigning orders to your assets, all the way out to be, be, being able to reconcile transactions. And the idea is that for folks who are currently using Smart Tank system and are able to take some of that information that you get from the system, everything from your tank and current inventory into more, a bit more advanced analytics, such as the efficiency, such as the fill detections. Um, and they're currently using it to generate dispatch manually. Um, this is kind of like a stepping stone for them to get into a bit more automated process, a bit more efficiency, um, and really kind of start looking to optimize their business processes around that day-to-day -day task. Um, for those of folks who are actually part of our petrol solution, the smart truck solution, that then becomes the full-fledged solution, which has everything from dispatch to delivery 
and really is the high end efficiency solution for folks who are really looking to create the maximum out of their assets, their day-to-day -day processes. Um, where this kind of sits up, this is being a cloud-based solution. It's kind of the mid-tier, almost like a stepping stone, but for folks who don't want to, who want to look into smart truck in the future, but want to start to get a taste of what it looks like to use these processes, uh, this is a great tool to get started. Um, and even otherwise, it's got a great fit for many industries going forward. So just to give a quick overview, I, as I mentioned, this is a web-based solution. One of the greatest strengths it has is its seamless integration with SmartTank. So what you're looking at from that perspective is we're able to take everything that you have in SmartTank, all your tanks, whether monitored with our tank monitor, or if you have a third-party system on there, all your customers, in this case, your ship tools, what we call tank locations in SmartTank, user information, or whether you have customer build tools defining organizations or not, and take all of that straight into this platform. What that means is though, is that every piece of data that you're getting from having a smart tank monitor on and the efficiencies that you're able to get in terms of the alerts and alarms, um, the visibility is pulled in directly into this system. From that point onwards, you're actually able to then enter other assets that you want to monitor in there as well, um, in terms of being able to synchronize with what you have in the field, everything such as your trucks, your drivers, your terminals, suppliers, vendors, and any contracts you have assigned. Again, to reiterate, this is a light core dispatch system, and the idea is that we're trying to emphasize, focus on having TAN data to be able to help you create a more automated dispatch end-to-end -end process. And again, the onboarding process, it's very simple. If everything is in smart tank, we can pull most of it in there without a problem, but even then, we have templates available within the software itself that will let you go ahead and input and do a mass upload of products or product categories or users' names and so on and so forth that may be missing. So within a day, you can get up and running and start doing this automated dispatch. Um, before I kind of delve into the actual software and give you kind of an overview, what are the main things we can offer? A, we can help you with tackle, of course, your must-do deliveries. Your TAN data is coming in. It's giving you low-level alerts. It's letting you know when you're going to run out. That same data is getting pulled into the system. So you can tackle your must-do orders, those you have to make sure that your customers don't run out from a whole gamut of categories that you can look at and filter around. So everything from your critical, your all, for your monitored and forecasted tanks, um, whether you have key pool customers or call first, regions, categories, and product types. And then there's an ability to, just like Smart Tank, be able to add and remove different columns and views that you can sort of sort your dispatch view around. You can filter by different parameters as well. And I'll kind of step into this when we, once we get a chance to look at the actual dispatch software. Um, there's also the ability to do could do deliveries. And this is where we start getting into higher efficiencies. You're sending a truck, everything from its maintenance, fuel expenditure, labor for the driver out to a location, just to do maybe one or two drops, but that's almost inefficient. Smart tank, we kind of, start using that around by giving you the idea of showing how your, where your tanks are, whether they're about to run out, whether they're about a low level alarm, what the usage data is. We've taken that and taken it up a little bit higher up on level and say, okay, since you're about to create those orders, why don't you look at it, look at who else you can cater in that same area, whether it's in a particular radius, whether it's the same ship to, and you can then define that even by product categories, a product depending upon what your truck, tank wagon, trailer assets, so on and so forth, can carry into the area. So now you're kind of maximizing that assets usage and being more efficient at creating orders. There's a planning board. So those folks who do not have a dispatch system in place right now and are still on the notepad system or are kind of using a mix of manual and third, you know, back office software to kind of generate an order and then kind of make this work. This is really, we're kind of saying this, get rid of all that manual process. You're using notepads or planning boards or like a, um, a sticky notepad, just get rid of all of that. Everything is electronic, everything is in one place, everything's in the cloud. You're able to actually assign orders to your assets. Um, all your trucks can take those orders, they can be done with automatic routing. So you're able to look into which orders are going into which area once you assign them onto a truck. You can optimize those routes, whether it's the current route or really then start taking advantage of our algorithms and say, give me the fastest route. Once you have that, then you can go ahead and change your plan accordingly and really, um, you know, as I said, maximize the usage of the assets, least time 
to get to the destination, least time spent on site, and you can get out, provide dispatch and notes to the driver, and so on and so forth. Um, on the planning board, you can also assign drivers and trailers to trucks to map the assets configuration. So as I said, if you've got a tank wagon and four compartments, two of them for diesel, two of them for gasoline, you can do that. And all of the combination, whether it's chemicals um, or lubricants and so on and so forth. And finally, once you've done this part, you can go ahead and print or even email that route to a disk to, the, to your driver, who can then go ahead and start plugging that in and going around this route. There's also a mobile app we're doing in a test for right now that is a very basic mobile app that will let drivers, once they get on site, also mark the deliveries and take a couple of images to send back to the system, such as the BOL or the customer signature. And finally, there's transaction management. Um, so once you've gotten all your day's orders back, the deliveries have been done, you can go ahead and reconcile them in many ways. Um, everything from the monitor being able to say the order has been completed, all Skybase monitors have a fill detection intelligence on them so they can detect when a fill has been made and they can update this automatically without you having to do any input that a delivery has been made and the number of gallons that have been put in. Um, or you can also go ahead and auto complete the, the order without having to go input immediately based on what you shipped out to the customer. You still have the ability to go ahead and edit those orders manually so you can go in there and kind of fine tune the gallons for your, for your invoicing purposes and say I've received I said 800, but I only put in about 754, so you can go ahead and make sure those invoices match up. And finally, you can take all of this data and export this out to your back office via flat file dump. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of switch to the real deal, this as a demo that I did, and then we'll kind of switch to the main software. Bear with me while I kind of do that. Um, excuse me. All right, I'm hoping everybody can see this. So this is what the software looks like. Uh, basic interface for Smart Tang when you first log in. And really, it's a very intuitive software. We kind of almost guide you through the steps that you have to do. So you start off with your dispatch. And the dispatch has a three main, you know, three main uh, tabs that you can go to, the ones I talked about, order generation, the planning board, and transaction management. Almost like a one, two, three in terms of the tasks that you have to do throughout the day. There's also maintenance and administrative tab. The administrative tab is only used when you kind of onboard your systems on Smart Tank. It is a one-time task only for system administrators, and we're happy, happy to help you guide through the entire process for you, so it's really seamless and very fast. Maintenance tab is going to be including everything from being able to add in your trucks, drivers, trailers, terminals, um, any corporate information you want to include, just so that you are synchronizing what you are doing in practical life versus what you have available uploaded as a digital twin inside the cloud system. So um, kind of looking through what the dispatch system does, we're going to start off with the dispatch uh, process. But one of the things I want to kind of go through is we don't charge for users. There's no user license, so you can have as many users as you want. Um, I talked about these tabs. The first thing you're going to do is go into generate order, dispatch planning, and transaction workbench. Um, so let's start with the Generate Orders tab, and we'll go from there. So a couple of things before we kind of move on. You can see the columns in here for folks familiar with Smart Tank, the same aspect, the same ability to go ahead and shift and move those columns around, add and remove those columns, and sort by each column. And then you have the ability to go ahead and actually save those columns as a current profile for that user. So if somebody has a preference for having the columns in some way, um, they can go ahead and do that, but there's a whole bunch of information that you can go ahead and move around for yourself to go ahead and track and put in there. Um, and as I said, you can go ahead and save it. Um, part of the first process is you want to go ahead and set the criteria. So as you can see, I talked about the must-dos. Same thing, everything from being able to select your regions, which delivery method, product categories, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go ahead and since I was finalizing the demo for us today, for you, for us yes, yesterday. Um, I was going to change the date today, but as you can see, there's a bunch of options that you you can have, and what it lets you do is, if you want to go ahead and dispatch for today, early morning, or you want to go ahead and dispatch for tomorrow by creating your orders today to go out in the morning, you can go ahead and do that as well. Um, it's fairly simple. We're able to let you go ahead and have the flexibility to switch out dates and create orders even days in advance. So if somebody wants to kind of just leave it to will calls for the next week, they can go ahead and do that as well. Um, so 
you know, it's, it's pretty intuitive by reducing the time the dispatcher needs to be doing their tasks. You pick the other things, you get your tanks in place. The interesting thing is the way it organizes it, it puts them all together by ship two. So you can go ahead initially by ship two. So all the different ship twos are shown by this alternating blue and white color. Um, but you could still have the ability to go ahead and organize by any of these columns. So if you want to sort by the last delivery date, by the average fill, by truck, any of these columns, you can go ahead and organize it by that if that is what the process you want to follow. Um, another aspect, of course, that you want to go ahead and see is within the dispatch columns itself that you can organize, you also have the ability to go ahead and um, still do an export of this. We'll kind of touch base on that later. Some of the things to indicate is when you have an order that's shown up in black, this means that this, this particular ship to or this tank already has an order created for it, the date the order was created. And as you can see, it's been assigned to trucks already. So you know that this, these ones are assigned. You can go back actually and go ahead and filter this out to not show these tanks if you want to, and just concentrate on the ones that you need to have orders created for. Um, so let's say we wanted to go ahead and create a couple of orders. We can do it one by one. Um, in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and do like a whole bunch of orders for these ship two since they're all in the same lo location, vicinity and state. I've had them sorted by state. I'm just gonna go ahead and do a mass click of all of them and then go ahead and basically generate orders. You can go ahead and generate orders one by one. It's up to you if you want to more do it more fine tuned. You wanna look at what monitors it in, everything from, the, from different data points. And I'll kind of open an order later on in this to show you how it looks like and what parameters you can change in there. But for simplicity's sake, once you have this selected, based on your territories, based on your ship twos, I'm gonna go select a bunch more, and then we just go ahead and basically create an order right there, and then by clicking generate orders, that is the entire process to create orders for the system. Pulling from smart tank data, you already know what you need to put in the tank, and um, you already know which ones are close by. So that's one of the advantages that we have that we're we're optimally, really letting you do those efficiencies or saying, okay, if I've got a customer that's been constantly giving me a will call or has been running out, because of smart tank data, I know when that guy's gonna run out in the next two or three days, I can go ahead and bunch those orders together and have these orders, almost forecasted orders ready to go even before the customer has a chance to call in and let you know what's going on. So you've generated the orders out. Um, and that's really kind of the primary step that you have to do here. You can do some other generation. You can see the orders have been created by this black highlight on the assign date. Um, and then it's moving on to the dispatch planner from this point onwards. There's also the ability to sort of prioritize orders. You can have a high priority or not. Um, again, for those trouble customers, I want to kind of delve into what we call the critical low. I know we talked about it when I was giving the presentation, is that these are the ones that you want to check in for orders that you could do to maximize your asset usage. So similar process, but a couple of other things involved in it. What the could do is you can go ahead and actually select, as I mentioned, everything from parameters such as how many days to empty would these tanks be in relation to those must do's, um, or whether it's in the same category or same product, whether it's the same ship to, or even by radius as well. I'm gonna increase the radius out for some of these tanks, probably to about 25 or so just so we kind of capture a whole bunch of these tanks that your driver can tackle in one day. Again, these are all specific to your own processes, but the idea is we're trying to be more and more efficient while dispatching so that we're maximizing the asset usage, reducing the number of time my driver is going out there, the amount of time he we're paying him, um, and really just translating all those cost benefits throughout the organization. So I've got a couple of ship good tools that come out, not too many, but then I can go ahead and select and create orders for them. Um, same thing, going to select those tanks out, pick them, create the orders. And there's another thing that you can do from here is that, let's say you wanted to not go into main, to your dispatch planning, you already know you've assigned them to a dispatch planner. You can go ahead and quickly assign the orders straight from here as well onto trucks. If you know which truck is in which region, if you know that truck is probably about to go out, you're able to kind of do those last minute assignments even from the order generation page and you know make sure your asset is able to go ahead and make those deliveries. So let's go ahead and see what, once we assign this orders out and we can move into the, the dispatch planning phase. Um, keeping in mind, of course, that once you're in the dispatch planning phase, it's all about drag and drop and you'll see what I mean when I go there. So I had a chance to set all of this up just for demonstration purposes, but 
once you're in the dispatch planner, um, since you saw on the screen, it's pretty much the same. You have the big planning screen with the day laid out, your assets are on the left. And then from that point onwards, it's, as I said, a matter of drag and drop and really just making sure you've got enough spacing between orders based upon the route we're suggesting that you go ahead and take. You have the, the ability to do it, to do the planning board the same as with the order board for today, for tomorrow, for a week out, depending upon how, you, how your processes go, what are your customer base looks like, what are their preferences for you know, getting deliveries and so on and so forth. Um, quick talk about customers and ship twos. You can define what delivery hours they have along with any of the dispatcher notes that need to go with them. So if you've got to call somebody when you're on site or you have to go ahead and press a keypad, key code, so on and so forth, you can have those dispatcher notes in there, not just for the dispatcher to review, but those can also be sent to the driver so they're aware of these um, little nuances as well. So how does the whole dispatching board work? A um, couple of things I want to go into show you in terms of not just signing the orders, but also being applying the load and BOLs on it. Um, this is demo data we've been pulling in from a dummy site, so it's not the live data from Smart Tank. But if you had live data, it would probably make it a lot easier. A couple of things on the legend side, you can see everything from what load type you put on there, everything from gravity pump out to BOL transfers. And then there's also the ability to look at what the planner status is. Are those those that have been dispatched, those that have been already completed, approved, or those that have been returned, and so on and so forth. The same goes on the order well side. Do we have a critical must-do order, the low and should-do orders, and then those orders that may have been returned or canceled, and so on and so forth. Um, so just from this perspective, as I said, going to the order well, I'm going to pull it up a little bit because the screen is a little small. Let's see if, it, if I went ahead and maximized it. But the, the idea is, of course, is that once you have to set your criteria, so again, mentioning we went past, past 21 days. I want to bring it down to a couple more days so we can capture all the orders I created in the last few days and go ahead and dispatch them. You can choose which ones you want to put onto this dispatch well, whether those have been created or already planned. I'm going to take those off. And then, of course, you have the same options of being able to show categories or not those categories, um, everything from planned, return, canceled, and those different perspectives. Once you set that, you'll go ahead and basically fill the order well, which is down below. And then we can go ahead and see which orders we need to tackle today. Um, quick note on it, same sort of organization that you saw in the, in the order generation tab. Same ability to drag and drop columns, same ability to show columns, not show them, um, set up the view as you like to see it as that particular user. So we've got this whole bunch of orders. Um, as I mentioned, everything you can sort them by state. Right now they're all sorted by state for me. Um, and then I can just go ahead and basically drag and drop them as I spoke about earlier. So what that has actually looked like is you go ahead, you can check box the orders, you can go ahead and um, actually hold them on. I wish I'd kind of put this a little further, but this is just what I was talking about in terms of the columns. Um, you can go ahead and assign columns, add them, remove them, depending upon your day-to-day -day, day -day task and what your preferences are. One of the things to note about the dispatch planner, of course, is that it's it's designed to mirror what you people were using in, as manuals perspective. So it's kind of works in the same way. That's why you can see the pins on there and the completed tasks as well. Um, but in terms of like assigning orders, there's really nothing special about it. We're going to see that this happen. And some of our, especially our tech, smart truck customers, the Petro team, they already had this capability for years, and their that system is has got a whole much more gamut on this. You wanted to give this almost like a feel into those folks, um, get some of the whole folks started on this efficiencies. And then when you feel that you've been familiar with the system, we can kind of talk about whether you want to go even more efficient with the Petro system that we have out of the smart truck system, as we call it. All right, so what does order assignment look like? We're going to click these orders through. I'm going to assign them en masse to a particular asset, which I know is in the area. It operates out of those terminals. You can go ahead and assign everything from your trucks to your vendors to your contracts um, to particular terminals in the area and essentially vice versa, however you see fit. And the same goes for drivers. Now, what's happened is I've thrown this order onto this particular truck. At this point, it's not optimized in the sense that there's no route for it set. I'm going to put in the, the loading data on for it as well, so where it's going to load from, where it has to pick up the product from. Um, I can space it out. But the idea is once you have the load put on, 
which is essentially you're going to check it off. If it was pulling off actual smart tank data right now, it's a dummy data, you could probably go and do by orders and best fit. I'm just going to go by gravity. Um, and right now, it's going to fill it up. I can go ahead and select the terminal I want to fill it up from, which supplier to use, whoever I want to use in that particular case, whichever vendor I want to use. And if there's a contract as well, I can pick it out. It's not necessary, but it's always going to be recommended and as part of your day-to-day -day business process. I'm sure you guys have to use contracts as well. Um, once this part has been done, then the next step is pretty simple. We can go into route mapping immediately, but I'm going to kind of hold off on it. Um, one of the things is I've done faster route right now. I'm going to do it one more time. But the idea is all this task, if it wasn't me going to deliberate, you can probably pull this off within five minutes and get this done. Within the trucks view, you have the option to look at everything from, as I said, being able to map the route, look at the truck status, the product summary, what's on right now, what the load and BOL options are, um, everything, what the BOL looks like, what the driver has to do. We're going to go ahead and after this, just go ahead and do route, this route it one more time. It doesn't really make a difference. You've done the route once. And once the route is complete, you go to the map and you can see the route has been generated in the most optimized fashion. You can zoom out and have a look at the route just to make sure the driver can know. But then once you have this perspective and you know what route has been sort of selected, you can go ahead and space these orders out as I've done for these other trucks below according to the time travel. Um, keep it in mind that uh, these other ship twos are in the same area, so that's not it's not make much of a route difference. But you have the ability to go ahead and look at that route and kind of do the time spacing accordingly. Um, eventually, you're going to have the ability to let this go automatically, so you won't even have to do that anymore. And that once that part is done, then it's just sending it off to the driver, right? Because you've done the put it on the planning board, you've done the route planning. Then it's just a matter of basically exporting it to, to either an Excel sheet or you can go ahead and email it to the driver. Um, I'm going to show you guys the Excel sheet in just a bit, but essentially that's kind of the end of the step for dispatch. At this point, your driver has the data that he, that he or she needs, and they can go out and go out and complete the dispatch. This is what they get, really their route, what orders they're doing, what do they have to touch, 1 to 14, and so on and so forth, depending upon the driver, the route density and which orders they have to complete. Um, there's, I mentioned kind of earlier about the mobile dispatch apps. I'm going to kind of switch over to that in just a bit. But that's the idea is that the driver has this, he's already on his route. He can go ahead and make those deliveries as he goes along the route. And if this, the tank has a smart tank monitor on it, which we highly encourage, it's going to pick up the fill detection and it's going to go ahead and essentially send the fill detection back. A couple of notes. You've sent this orders off for dispatch and you get a will call in there. You're not going to have to go back into order generation. You can create an order right from the screen as well and drop it on there. And you have everything from the option of how to fill it, which customer or ship to, bill to accounts, uh, which truck to assign it to from here, to what the delivery windows are will pull up, and anything else you want to add on to the order. So a lot of flexibility in terms of the process. You're not bound to having to go back into windows and back into pulling up the same process again and again. That's so, you know, we're letting you accommodate everything from your will calls to even orders that have been returned that you can reroute to another customer. Um, just so we're reducing the burden that you have to do and kind of having to redo things again and again. So um, I'm going to go to the, to the mobile dispatch app in just a bit. Uh, the next step, of course, the transaction workbench. But before we do that, I want to kind of show you what the mobile dispatch app looks like. So with the mobile dispatch app, very simplistic, but the idea is to just to keep it simple end-to-end -end dispatch. The driver gets an Excel sheet along with a QR code on top of it. So he has a route already what he has to take, um, but he also gets a QR code that he can scan using this mobile app. And what this looks like is um, basically in the mobile app, right now we don't have a login capability. We can go ahead and do that as well for drivers. Currently it just looks at a QR code. We're going to continuously improve the mobile app. But the reason I wanted to show you this was you can use both the QR code and or be able to actually browse the file within there. So you can actually browse to a file that the driver may have saved on his folder and be able to pull that Excel sheet up and then kind of uploads all the orders. As to the orders in the mobile app kind of pulls up, says, okay, this is what you have to do. Here's the order details, customer details, ship to, and any notes on the dispatcher, kind of what I mentioned earlier, everything from, you know, use this gate code or does not open in this time, delivery times, and so on and so forth. Um, and once that's done, the driver can say, okay, what am I going to be delivering? So they can go ahead and click and add the delivered product that they have. 
there's the ability to both scan the delivered product, select it from a drop-down list, and then they can go ahead and actually look at the volume that they're delivering as well, or if they're reading off a meter. Um, and again, the idea is it's very simple. There's nothing to you know advance. We're not connecting to any meters. You want that capability, you go to Smart Truck, which gives you a whole other level of efficiency that's involved. Um, but then that's the whole point of this is we're kind of getting you into this flow of efficiency so you can prep up for those higher level of you know, integration and software. You've made the delivery, you get your customer signature, you take any images that you take, everything from the uh, ticket to perhaps your, um, you know, whether you, how you delivered, what the picture of the meter looked like. And then that, those images are being automatically sent back to the dispatch software without the driver having to come back and give you any information. They're already back into the system. So your dispatcher at this point, now that they're in the transaction workbench, already have access to those images and that information to start going in and closing their transactions out and start moving through the invoicing process. So this is a transaction workbench. Once again, same layout. You can create it as we want it, move the, sort it as you want it, move the columns around as you need fit. Um, but the idea here is that you, you know, you've got a whole bunch of order that you sent out. You've got everything that has been completed. Some of those have been planned. And you can then go ahead and filter those out accordingly as well, just as with the other um, with the other interfaces that you saw earlier. One, two, three, generate, dispatch, and then go back and reconcile the transactions. So same pro process, set your criteria. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the planned and cancel orders. We don't wanna look at that. On the new ones, we're gonna just focus on those that have been completed or planned. Now, I mentioned on the complete side, you've got a couple of options to look at. So you've got the complete by the time monitor. So that's what we call order completed by service. That basically means is that the time monitor picked up the filter type, as I mentioned earlier, and sent it to the system, the same system that you have on Smart Tank, the same cloud, there's no integration required, nothing on your end to be done. And that's basically pushed in saying, hey, I had a fill detection, matches the volume that was supposed to be put in, looks like the order is complete. Um, there's also the ability to auto complete yourself. So similar to auto generation of the orders, you can auto complete them, say that an order has been done. It's possible you delivered exactly as the amount you wanted to put in there, so 200 gallons or 200 gallons and so on. But you still have the ability to go in and adjust those gallons to, the, to fine tune them to what exactly was delivered. Now, this was something done by the, the, the driver. That too would show up as auto completed by service. But because the driver is able to adjust what gallons he put in, we can put those exact gallons into the system. So in terms of being able to adjust the orders I talked about, you can go into each order, fine tune it, um, add any information. If you've got any images back from the driver, if not, you want to receive the images once the driver came back, you can put those into the system um, and really make those adjustments in the cloud so your data is all synchronized. And the last thing you would want to do is, let's say you've completed all this aspect, you still want to go ahead and create an order out for somebody who had a last minute call. You have the ability to do it from here or be able to assign it for next day as well. Um, this is kind of pretty much the end of the whole transaction process. So you did the generation of the orders, you, op you created optimized orders based upon your monitored information that you got from your tanks. You were able to put it on a dispatch planner to essentially be able to optimize your route, you've got an optimized route in play, you're able to plan it accordingly, send it off to your driver, send the email off, hand him a cell sheet, or move it to a, let him use the mobile dispatch app. And once he's completed those orders, you've completed a transaction workbench. Essentially, your entire dispatch process is complete at this point. Now it comes to the back office, you can go ahead and export all this data back to the back office, whether you use something like QuickBooks or some other sort of middleware, and you can import all this data, everything from what order was delivered, gallons, uh, time of delivery, and so on and so forth. And you and those tools can then use there. You can use the parameters you have in those tools to kind of match up the orders and you know finalize your invoicing process and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much it. That's that's kind of the whole crux of what we have going on with Smart Tank Dispatch. Um, I can kind of delve on the maintenance screen if somebody wants me to, but as I said, the purpose of the maintenance screen is just to kind of add on the different assets that you have and um, you know, look into what you want to synchronize and what you have in the field and what you have available otherwise. All right, so I'm going to kind of stop here and switch to the main screen. And Sarah, I think we're good for taking any questions at this point. 
Okay, perfect. Um, thank you, Faraz. That's a fantastic presentation. So we did have a question during the presentation, but it looks like the um, gentleman has left. Is the dispatch part of the base account of this additional or this additional cost? So does this cost more or what kind of pricing structure is um, are we looking at for this? For us, is there something we can share with everybody or should they contact their sales representative? Yeah, in terms of pricing, it's probably best to reach out to the sales representative, but what I can tell you is that this dispatch is an add-on to Smart Tank. It, right. There is integration, but there is it is an added capability just because it's a full-fledged software on itself. Um, However, as I said, we're, we're happy to kind of help folks out, especially since we're just launching it. We do want to emphasize that we're happy to let folks do a beta trial of it with no charge. There's one for you know, everything from period of a year to year and a half, depending upon what we decide with the salesperson. Um, in terms of fees, currently we're, we've got a structure that's looking at an initial fee, and there's a sufficient fee per tank and a monthly subscription. But as I said, it's really all dependent upon what we discuss with your salesperson. Got you. Um, and then Elaine just typed in a question. Thank you, Elaine. Um, similar to the other gentleman's question, what we have seen is smart tank products lower level than full blown smart truck. Question. Correct. So full blown smart truck has a whole gamut of capabilities, which is really what we think. If you were to think about this as smart tank dispatch, truck is dispatch delivery and a whole lot more. And mm -hmm. really what this, where this product comes in is for folks who are just, you know, into Smart Tank and thinking about optimizing their process. If Smart Tank is your walk, this is almost like your jog. And then your Smart Truck becomes your run, where you're really fully optimized with everything from your meters on your trucks to your tablets into place. Um, and we're really being that that's almost like 90% efficient in every aspect of your deliveries, your dispatching, and, you know, even in your integrations of business processes. Perfect, thank you. So, Elaine, I hope that answered your question. Um, anyone else? Let me just kind of look through the list here. I don't think I see any other questions. Um, does anyone else have questions um, for Faraz? If you don't um, now, you can't think of them right now, that's fine. Everyone does have a, a sales representative they can reach out to. Um, so I would definitely recommend you do that if you're interested. Okay, Elaine has another question. What would my trucks need in them to utilize this level? Um, frankly, your trucks would not need anything. The only thing that this is mostly based on the cloud. As far as the mobile app component of this is concerned, it can use any Android application and an iOS application as well. Um, again, as I said, the mobile application is very simplistic. It's just designed to help them reconcile the orders in terms of what has been delivered. It doesn't really look at the meter, doesn't integrate with the meter, doesn't do anything on the transaction um, right. that the smart truck site can do. But the idea being, of course, is if you start using this, you've had this in for a while, we can then reach out to you regarding smart truck and say, okay, how about, you know, we can think about moving to smart truck once you really optimize your dispatch processes from this point forwards. So for folks who've been using smart tank, this is a great step onto before heading into smart truck. Um, or if they're kind of you know contemplating how to get into smart truck and getting the learning process, but um, really smart truck is the full fledged system. This is your light core dispatch system, um, and really focused on you know getting you into those initial optimization processes. Did that answer your question? I believe it did. Um, thank you, Elaine, for your questions. We appreciate them. Um, and Sean has a question. We're using SmartLink's dispatch and delivery. Is there an integration with SmartTank to plan orders? So, I mean, in terms of smart links, there's already integration with smart tank. You, you technically have a bit of higher capability just because, as I said, this is like for dispatch. But when it comes to this particular software, it too has an integration with smart tank. Smart links has a couple more features in place. And as a new version of smart links rolling out pretty soon, um, you're going to see some of the changes that you, in terms of the UI coming up as well. Um, sorry, I, is there a question in place? 
No, go ahead. I'm not sure what happened there. Go ahead. Yeah, I heard somebody. No worries. So yeah, yeah I mean, in terms of the integration, you already had that with smart links, and really that goes across SkyBridge products in terms of the the tank and truck field. So whether it's smart tank to smart tank dispatch or the smart trunk, we are able to integrate seamlessly. So it's pretty much transparent to you. You won't even notice the change what's happening in the background. Awesome, Sean said thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Yeah, there's a lot, there that was a lot of information and it's really very, uh, your demonstration was fantastic for us. So I'm assuming people will have more questions, but um, you can get them in now. We still have a couple more minutes, um, but if you have further questions, again, like I'd mentioned, the best person to reach out to would be your sales, um, your sales director. Um, telemetry support would not be the best ones to reach out regarding this just because, you know, they're, they're managing a day-to-day and the, the salesperson would be able to either hook up with Faraz and have a you know a little bit more of a robust conversation with you and your team, or your salesperson can really um, give you information on this, um, which I'm glad there was some you know talk and, and uh, conversation around it. So that was a fantastic presentation. So Faraz, if if you're good, uh, we did record this session. Um, so I'll, you know, start to segue out and make sure everybody knows that, you know, again, I'll talk about that DoorDash, uh, the $15 DoorDash. If you're still on right now, it's looking good. <laughs> uh, you have to stay for the entirety of the, of the, uh, session in order to get the $15 DoorDash coupon sent to you. The link will be sent by our marketing department. We did record this session and, um, we do have a YouTube channel. So Skybits has a YouTube channel. We have the other uh, session where we did some tank monitor, uh, smart tank training, um, it was a fantastic breakdown of the smart tank website, how to set it up, how to set up tanks, how to just really goes from soup to nuts. So everything you would need would be on those training videos. It was performed by the customer success team. Um, so please go to the YouTube channel. There is a uh, specific group of videos that will walk you through smart tank. So there are descriptions on each session so that you're able to figure out, hey, which one do I really want to look at? Um, so we've recorded this. We're going to put this on the YouTube channel, I believe, early next week. Um, this is a four week session. So this is week one. Week two, we will be hearing from Faraz again on the new UI. So please come back to you know hear about that. Um, it's another fantastic presentation. I've seen it and <laughs> there's a lot of information. Um, so within your organization, if you'd like to spread the word, thank you for attending and spread the word to other folks in your organizations who would like to get some more information on the new user interface. Um, we'll be happy to give you that information next week. Questions in the meantime, please feel free to reach out to us, to your salesperson, to our telemetry support group. Um, and unless any of my other colleagues have anything to add here, I would like to thank you all for attending. Um, anyone else have anything to add? Nope. All right. So I appreciate everyone coming and I hope you all have a fantastic day.